Michael Dorn came back to play Worf, continuing the, his character. I knew he was on. Yeah. Two shows. They also had um, Colin Maley. He played um, O'Brien, the chief engineer, who actually was a minor character on Next Generation and continued his his um, his character on Deep Space Nine. How did he get through the wormhole into Deep Space? He didn't. He didn't go through the wormhole. The wormhole is already in the Alpha Quadrant. See, the wormhole was already in the Alpha Quadrant, and the wormhole was going to the Beta Quadrant. You're getting me a little confused here, because I know that in Star Trek Voyager, which happens a little bit later, uh, which is another TV we'll show... We'll get to that in a minute. We're on Deep Space Nine. Yeah, well, Deep Space Nine it ran for probably another six years. Six, seven really? years. Really? That long? It was on from, like, 93 to 99. So they actually started it in the last season oh. of Next Generation. Right. And then it continued on through 99. So that's how they had the transfer of characters. I can get it. It was interesting too. I'm not attacking this attacking no, this stuff. That's no, fine. Avery Brooks's character had a son in the show whose wife had died of the Borg attack at Wolf 359. And it resulted in him being a widower. Now the Borg were introduced in Next, Next generation. generation. They were kind of like the Klingons. They needed to have a bad guy and since the Klingons weren't the bad guy. Very anymore. interesting take on a bad guy though, because aren't the Klingons under Borg like just people reprogrammed people? What so, like the humanity, Borg are, humanity? Yeah. It's a computer collective of humanoid beings mm -hmm. who've been assimilated into a computer system which every they don't have any individuality. And everything was for the collective. It's also a great band out of Boston. Look them up. Google them, the Borg. Anyway, they looked, they looked cool too. They were all like cyborg. You know? Yeah. Did like Patrick Stewart get captured by them? Yes, he did. He got captured. And that's the other thing is like when his when he got captured by the Borg and turned into a Borg for the. That's when the bearded guy took over. That's when the bearded guy had. See, I knew he played captain for a while there. Yeah, but yeah. then they got then they got him back and he became captain again. You know. I don't know if I'd have trusted him. People. Star Trek is kind of like a formula, you know? It it really, if you know what you need to put in there, it'll be good. Deep Space Nine didn't get any movies made out of it, but I mean, seven years of a, of a TV series. And Wasn't that deemed more successful than The Next Generation by some people? Uh, some people think it was. I think it was just as successful. But The Next Generation also has those movies, which, you know, did a pretty good job. How many Next Generation movies are there? Seven. Four. Four. There's Star Trek Generations. Yep. Great Star story. Trek um, First Contact. Star okay. Trek Insurrection. And oh, that's Star the one. Nemesis. Now, isn't that the Insurrection, the, the awful one? That, it's the one where they're finding the planet with the people can live <coughs> forever. No, oh, I don't know. At the end, it was this like, really ridiculous confrontation between one guy and uh, Patrick Stewart there, and he had to like escape underneath his little invisible radar on the cliffs of the, uh, by the ocean. It was just ridiculous. That's Generations. I will even concede I wasn't very happy with the next generation movies. Although they were I remember, we, I remember people were very excited about Star Trek. They were very excited about the generation gap between the generations. Well, yeah, they, it was a different. It was a different series. Like I would say. Let, let me ask you one thing though. As an outsider looking in, what was with the deal of bringing back? It's like, it seems like every Star Trek film had to have a cast member of the original Star Trek was in it. Why did they keep doing that? Why did they keep bringing them back? Um, Even did in J.J. Abrams' uh, new one there. Let them go. I mean, I let guess, them go, Trekkies. Well, okay. I, I mean, guess in a sense, it's like an unbroken chain. I really don't mind it. But anyways, um, let so, the new generation be the new generation. Speaking of TV shows, after Deep Space Nine was on for a while. That's when Star Trek Voyager came out. I think they started in 95 and they stopped it in 99. Literally both shows ended at the same time. But Star Trek Voyager was about the ship, this USS Voyager, that it gets blasted into the Delta Quadrant like 300 million light years away from Earth. Now that's the one that has the female captain, right? Yes. Okay, so they, went they had the usual cast of characters. They had the... Uh, Who was the Spock? Who was the Spock? Okay. Well, let me see. They had a few. They had Tuvok, who was the Vulcan. 
they had um, Chicote, who was the first officer, Paris, who was the helmsman, no. okay. pilot. Now, what show and what character is that very famous actress that like all the Star Trek guys go gaga over? Like, mega hot, and she wears like this crazy, super skin tight outfit. Oh, Seven of Nine. Okay. What, what Jerry Ryan. Wait, when, yes, yes, that's the name. Thank you. Jerry, Jerry Ryan. Ryan. What show was she in? Uh, she was in. She was in Voyager. Okay, she's in Voyager. She was a Borg that apparently she was seven of nine uh, of, of nine Borg, oh, and she watch. gets saved by the Voyager crew, and they kind of allow her to be a member of the crew. Right, and it's in distrust because she is a Borg, and she is part Borg, but she's mostly hot. Yeah, she's she can assimilate me anytime. <laughs> you had that very interesting crew. Of people again. There's one more show, right? There is, and that is Star Trek Enterprise. Now, Enterprise, this as outside looking in, kind of completely blew me away because it almost seemed like they were really taking a big risk. Mm -hmm. And although I, I do agree they casted well, but um, they really sh he really should have stuck with Quantum Leap. Yeah, Scott Bakula plays Captain Jonathan Archer of the USS Enterprise. This is supposed to be the first captain. Yeah, now this is like a prequel. Card. This is before, but yet her. the technology s superseded them. Um, not to a certain extent. Like for example, in the first season of the show, they didn't have a transporter. Yes, but then they did. Yeah, they were they able. Didn't, to didn't they have to start to have technology that they didn't have? They had in the original Star Trek. Yeah, because they had tech. They didn't have technology in the original Star Trek, but this was the show to kind of show how they developed the technology. Because one of the big things was that they couldn't. They couldn't figure out how to transport living matter. Like, they could transport, like, heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, physical stuff, like, you know, like... Yeah, like cargo. Yeah, cargo and that sort of thing. But they couldn't transport <coughs> living matter. They had to take... And that's the Sheridan right there. Okay, that's where we're going. That's where we're going. I mean, I'll be honest with you. It was kind of like... Okay? I think the issue with Star Trek after... When Enterprise started coming on the air... Enterprise, sorry. Um, it was getting to the point where Star Trek was starting to get burned out. At that time, there was just a lot of Star Trek. There was TV shows, there were movies, there were games, there were anything. How many everything. movies? Well, at That's the time, um, when Nemesis came out, there was ten. So that was ten movies. You had two, three, four TV shows within like a ten year period that had been already premiered or were premiering. We were relatively successful. They were very successful, but the point is, there's only so much that an audience can take for some particular time. And of course, it just started slowing down. It was like a big, huge, Ugh. And so when it finally ended, you know, when Enterprise ended, there was just kind of like this. Like, it, people exhaled, but like me, they realized, hey, you know what? The original Star Trek was the best. Well, the other thing that they did was, in late to, in the late O's, I call it, they released the original TV series on DVD, but they actually updated the special oh, effects. Oh, yes, that's what I have. The remastered edition. They did that very tastefully. They didn't change yeah. anything. They just made it... They just changed the effect shots. Yeah, it was excellent. And when they did that, uh, it kind of brought back some interest back into Star Trek, coming back again. Via the strengths of the original one, like I had told you people. Mm -hmm. Original Star Trek's the best way to go. And that's when the the latest movie by James J.J. Abrams, mm -hmm. just Star Trek, yes. was planning on being made. And this one they were gonna reboot the original cast mm -hmm. and they were gonna kinda tell the story of how Star Trek got Doing what the Enterprise show was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I, I liked it, I thought it was excellent. I mean I understand it as hardcore fans out there like pissed off. Mega show. Mega show. Right here, the mega show is right here. Oh boy. What? I don't see anybody in costume. 